my coffee. It makes me mean, Lord, it makes me mean. I don't want no sugar in my coffee. It makes me mean, Lord, it makes me mean. I got a bulldog. He weighed 500 in my backyard, Lord, in my backyard. I got a bulldog, he weighed 500 in my backyard, Lord, in my backyard. When it barks, he rolls like thunder up in the clouds, Lord, up in the clouds. Oh, when it barks, he rolls like thunder. Hey, get break, man. What's up? You think that's funny, huh? <laughs> Do you think that's funny? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> your lesson. I want you to see if your uncle don't can eat anything from the store. Then you get upset and change your clothes. Yes, ma'am. We gotta go get some water. I ain't going nowhere. You go. I ain't going by myself. Well, then we can stay here then. If you took care of your truck, we wouldn't be here. We be in Pittsburgh. <laughs> At my sister's house. Eating fried chicken and cornbread. <laughs> hey, Lum, wait up. You don't know how to find no water. When you and Avery gonna get married? I ain't said nothing about getting married. Well, that's what the matter is. Maybe you ought to be saying something about it. Who brought a lie? Who brought a lie? I don't know. Who brought a lie? Who brought a lie? On the hen house door. On the hen house door. Somebody tell me. Watch, Lyman. As soon as Bonnie see me, she gonna try and start something. You watch. Yeah. Up, up. 
thought you was in Sunflower, Mississippi. I told you, Lima. Lima talking about you make me sleep. You remember Lima Jackson from down home? Yo. Just my Uncle Doka. Well, what you doing up here? Me and Lima selling watermelon. That's Lima's truck. Where Bernice? Bernice up there asleep. Well, let her get up. She can go back to bed. Me and Lima been riding two days in that truck. Least she can do is get up and say hi. Hey, Bernice! You got to go to work in the morning. Hey, well, she can get up and say hi. It's been three years since I seen her. What you doing making all that noise? Hey, police! <laughs> it's five o'clock in the morning. You can't come in like normal folk. Well, I ain't done nothing. You start all that noise before you hit the door. Oh, woman, I was glad to see Doka. You didn't have to come down if you didn't want to. I come 1,800 miles to see my sister. I figure she might want to get up and say hi. Other than that, you can go back upstairs. Hey, you remember Lima Jackson? How you doing, Bernice? <laughs> You look just like I thought you'd look. Hey, me and Lima selling watermelons. We got a truck out there. Hey, Doka, where your bottle? Me and Lima celebrating the ghosts of the yellow dog got Sutter. Say he drowned in his whale. When this happened, boy, Willie? Oh, about three weeks ago. Me and Lima was over in Stoner County when we heard about it. <laughs> we laughed. We thought it was <laughs> funny. A great big old 340-pound man gonna fall down his whale. Reminded me of Humpty Dumpty. Everybody say the ghosts of the yellow dog pushed him. I don't want to hear that nonsense. Somebody down there pushing them people in their wells. The only thing I want to know is when you and Lyman plan on going back. Lyman say he's staying. As soon as we sell them watermelons, I'm going on back. That's what you need to do. And you need to do it quick. Coming here disrupting this house. I'm surprised you ain't woke Maritha up. Well, you going up there. Wake up and tell our uncles here. I ain't waking that child up. You and Lyman need to sell them watermelons and go on back. I see Bonnie still act stuck up. You hear from whining, boy? That's my uncle. Oh, he come through here about a year ago. Had a whole sack of money, ain't offered nothing. Bernice asked him for $3, and he got mad and left. He's still making them records? Well, he made one or two records a long time ago. That's the only ones I ever known him to make. If you let him tell it, he a big recording star. <laughs> Is that the piano? Yeah, that's it, Lyman. You see how it got all them carvings on it? That's what I was talking about. You never find you another piano like that. Yeah, that looks real nice. I told you. Mm -hmm. You see how it's polished? Mm -hmm. My mama used to polish it every day. Yeah, that's real nice. I told you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Doka, Sutter's brother selling the land. Say you're going to sell it to me. Say you want to see me with it. Ask Lyman. Mm -hmm. How much land Sutter got left? Got a 100 acres. Good land. His brother don't want to be bothered with it. Told me he let me have it for $2,000 cash money. Told him to give me two weeks. That's why I come up here. Say all them watermelons. Get Bunnies to sell that piano. Put them two parts with the part I done saved. Oh, Doka. I walk in there, tip my hat. Lay my money down on the table, get my deed, and walk on out. This time, I get to keep all the cotton. Hmm. Bernie, ain't gonna sell that piano. Oh, no, I'm, I'm gonna talk to her now. She been playing on it. Uh, you know she won't touch that piano. I ain't never known her to touch it since your mama died. That's over seven years now. She say it's got blood on it. She got Maritha playing on it, though. Oh, Maritha don't need to be playing on no piano. She can play on the guitar. Well, you're gonna have a hard time trying to get Bernice to sell that piano. You know Avery Brown. <laughs> he followed Bernice up here trying to get her to marry him after Crawley got killed. Call himself a preacher now. Oh, I know Avery. Lyman know him, too. Hey, oh, Avery think all white men is big shots. He don't know that some white men ain't got as much as he got. Mm, that's why I know Bernice ain't gonna sell that piano. He tried to get her to sell it to help him start his church. 
Sent a man around and everything. What man? Oh, some white fella was going around all the colored people's houses looking to buy musical instruments. How much he offer her for it? Now, you know me. She didn't say and I didn't ask. I just know it was a nice price. Glass of water, Bernice. Get her a glass of water, boy, Willie. She don't need no water. She ain't seen nothing. Oh, let Bernice tell it. What happened, Bernice? I ain't stopping her from telling it. I come out of my room to come back down here. And Sutter was standing in the hall. What'd he look like? He looked like Sutter. Looked like he always looked. Oh, Sutter couldn't find his way from Big Sandy to Little Sandy. How are you gonna find his way all the way up here to Pittsburgh? Sutter ain't never even heard of Pittsburgh. Uh, gone, Bernice. The man ain't never left Sunflower County when he was living. And he gonna come all the way up here now that he's dead? Oh, go on, Bernice. Don't pay Boy Willie no mind. Ah! Oh. <laughs> He was standing there. He had his hand on top of his head. Looked like he might have thought if he took his hand down, his head might have fallen off. Did he have on a hat? He just had on that blue suit, standing there holding on to the top of his head. Mm. Call him Boy Willie's name. What, well, what are you calling my name for? I believe you pushed him down that well. <laughs> oh, now, what kind of sense that make? Oh, you telling me I'm going to go out there and hide in the weeds with all them dogs and things he got around there. I'm going to hide and wait till I catch him, looking down his well just right. Then I'm going to run over and push him in, a great big old 340-pound man. Well, what he calling your name for? He bending over, looking down his well, woman. How he know who pushed him? Could have been anybody. Where was you when Sutter fell in his well? Where was Doka? The ghost of the yellow dog pushed him. That's what the people say, just like all them other men. Come talking about he looking for me. That ain't nothing but in Bonnie's head. Ain't no telling what she liable to come up with next. You don't do nothing but bring trouble with you everywhere you go. If it wasn't for you, my husband would still be alive. I ain't have nothing to do with Crawley getting killed. That was his own fault. Just go on and leave. Let Sutter go looking somewhere else for you. Sutter looking for that piano. That's what he's looking for. He had to die to find out where that piano was at. If I was you, I'd get rid of it. That's the way to get rid of Sutter's ghost. Get rid of that piano. I want you and Lyman to go on and take all this confusion out of my house. I ain't going nowhere till we sell that watermelon. Well, won't you go on out there and sell them? We waiting till the people get up. Come on, Doka. Come walk up here with me. Let me get Maritha started. I got to get ready myself. I'm down here waiting on him. <laughs> I wish I could see Sutter. Then I put a whopping on him. <laughs> hey, 
sugar. Come on, give Uncle Boy Willie a hug. <laughs> don't be shy. Oh, don't go look at her. She done got bigger and she got big. Yeah, she getting up there. How you doing, sugar? Fine. This your Uncle Boy Willie from down south. Hey, that there lineman, he my friend. Hi. How you doing? You look just like your mama. <laughs> I remember you was wearing diapers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gonna come down south and see me? Uncle Boy Willie gonna get him a farm. You come down there, I'll teach you how to ride a mule. I'll teach you how to kill a chicken, too. I see my mama do that. Oh, it ain't nothing to it. You just grab him by his neck and twist it. You get a real good grip, you just wring his neck, throw him in that pot. Hey, your mama got you playing on that piano? You like that. You like playing on the piano. It's all right. You just got to read the notes off the paper, and they be hard to see. Hey, well, then Uncle Boy Willie gonna buy you a guitar. Let Uncle Doka teach you how to play on that. You don't need to read no paper to play on the guitar. Teresa? I gotta get ready to go. Whoa! <laughs> All right, Here come Avery now. You out here messing around, my tomatoes. Hey, don't hey, hey, <laughs> Look at him, Lavin. Look at him. He don't know what to say. How you doing, Avery? How you doing? <laughs> Is that Lava? Lava Jackson. Yeah, you know Lava. Yeah. What y'all doing up here? That must be your truck full of watermelons sitting in front of the house. Yeah, that's Lama's truck. Hey, hey, hey. Doka say you a preacher now. Well, <laughs> what? We supposed to call you Reverend Avery? <laughs> I remember you were down on a wheel shop place planting cotton. You wasn't thinking about no reverend then. Avery said he gonna be a preacher so he don't have to work. Oh, Avery working. Avery got him one of them good jobs. He down there working in one of them skyscrapers. Yeah, I'm running an elevator. Got a pension and everything. They even give you a turkey on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Bernie's be down in a minute. She say y'all going down to the bank. Yeah, I'm going down there. See if I can get me a loan to expand my church. How you get to be a preacher, Avery? It come to me in a dream. God called me, told me he wanted me to be a shepherd for his flock. And that's what I call my church. The Good Shepherd Church of God in Christ. Tell him what you told me. But tell him about the three hobos. Well, I was sitting out in this railroad yard, just watching trains go by. The train stopped. And these three hobos got off, told me to come go along with them. They gave me a candle, told me to light it, but to make sure it didn't go out. Then they took me to this place that was filled with all kinds of different people, only they all had sheep heads and was making noise like sheep make. And then they showed me these three doors and told me to pick one. Well, I went through one of them doors. That flame leapt off that candle. Seemed like my whole head caught fire. I looks around, there's four or five other fellows standing there. And then we heard a voice tell us to look out across this valley. We looked, and we seen the valley was full of wolves. The voice told us that the sheep people had to go over to the other side of this valley, and somebody had to take them. And then I heard another voice say, Who shall I send? And next thing I knew, I said, here I am, send me. And that's when I met Jesus. <laughs> he said, if you go, I'll go with you. And something told me to say, well, come on, let's go. <laughs> that's when I woke up. I knew right then I'd been filled with the Holy Ghost, called to be a servant of the Lord. Is we gonna take the streetcar? Ain't no week. Me and Avery dropping you off at the settlement house. And don't you go down there showing your color, huh? How you doing, Avery? You look nice. Thank you, man. Doka, I'll see you later. Hey, Bonice. What's the name of that man Avery sent past the house? Say he wants to buy the piano. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it when I first seen you. I knew you was up to something. Bonice, so the brother selling the land say he gonna sell it to me. And I need to sell the piano to get me the money to buy Sutter's land. 
I ain't selling up here on a boy, Willie, and that's all there is to it. And if that's what you come up here for, you done come up here for nothing. Well, all right. Hey, Doka? Mm-hmm. If Bornese don't want to sell that piano, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half and sell my half. That's your generator. You need a new generator. Can't fix that. Got to put a new one in there. Just leave a seat here. I have it ready for you tomorrow. No, no, we got to have it fixed today. Well, we can't fix it without the part, and can't get the part till tomorrow. And that'll cost you $10. Nyman, get a man $10. What? Why I always get the pay? There you go. Come on, let's go see Avery. We were just talking about you, whining boy. You left out of here with that sack of money. We thought we were never going to see you no more. <laughs> boy, really, said we wasn't going to see you till you got broke. Broke? What you mean, broke? I got a whole pocket full of money. You wait till he come in here. I'm going to tell him about his sale. <laughs> They've been around here three days trying to sell them watermelons, but the truck keep breaking down. Yeah. He say as soon as he can get that truck empty the way he can set that piano up in there, he gonna take it out of here and go sell it. Oh, shoot. Bernice ain't gonna sell that piano. And I can't understand how he don't know that. Well, it ain't done nothing but cause trouble. She need to go ahead and get rid of it. How long you been in Kansas City? Oh, since I left here. <laughs> yeah. Got tied up with some old gal down there. <laughs> oh. You know Cleopa Pass. Yeah, I heard that. I was sorry to hear that. One of her friends wrote and told me by the name of Willa Dean Perda. Mm -hmm. I was down there in Kansas City. She said she know Cousin Rupert, too. Uh-huh. She said, Dear Whining Boy, I am writing this letter to let you know Miss Cleotha Holman passed on Saturday the 1st of May. She departed this world in the loving arms of her sister, Miss Alberta Samuels. I know you would want to know this, and I'm writing as a friend of Cleotha. There have been many hardships since last you seen her, but she survived them all, and to the end was a good woman whom I hope have God's grace and is in his paradise. I pray this reaches you about Cleotha, Miss Willa Dean Perda, a friend. Man, that hit me so. They was nailing her coffin shut by the time I got the letter. And that just bust me all up inside. So I said, well, let me go see family. So I stopped by here to see you and Bernice. Uh, Cleotha always did have a nice way about it. Oh, man, that woman was something. I used to thank the Lord. Yeah, I looked out over my life. I said, well, I had Cleotha. When it didn't look like there was nothing else for me, I said, well, thank God, at least I had that. And if ever I go anywhere in this life, I'd have known a good woman. Hmm. Boy, Willie, how high you think that is? He wasn't expecting to see us. <laughs> oh, Willie, what you doing down here? We just stopped by to see you. Come on, take us for a ride. I can't have no company on my job. You gonna get me fired. Oh, you ain't gonna get fired. Come on, Mama. Oh, no, that, that, that rope might break. Hey, hey, ain't you scared that rope gonna break? Morning, sir. Morning. Bro, I'll be back. Wait for me. Morning, sir. Morning to you, Avery. See how they give you a turkey on Thanksgiving. Woo! 
Ooh, ooh, it run fast too. I ain't know it run this fast. Job. I'm working. I ain't got time to talk. Well, I just stopped by to find out the name of that man who say he wants to buy the piano. Doka said you sent him by the house. I forgot his name. He gave Bernice a card with his name and number on it, but I believe she threw it away. That's a while back. I can't recall his name. See you later, Abe. Come on, now. Oh, look at here. Whining, boy. What you doing here? Where you coming from? Where you been? I've been down in Kansas City. Hey, you remember Lyman Lima Jackson? Yeah. This yeah. smart uncle whining, boy. Now, I used to know his dad. Hey, don't let's say your niece asked you for three dollars and you got mad and left. Oh, shoot. Bernie's trying to rule over you too much for me. That's why I left. Oh, no, 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 no. That wasn't about no $3. <laughs> hey, hey, don't go tell you about Sutter. <laughs> the ghost of the yellow dog got him about three weeks ago. Bernie's been seeing his ghost in everything. Now, how many of that make? That the ghost of the yellow dog done got? I don't know. Must be about nine or ten. Hey, Bernice say she don't believe in all that about the ghosts of the yellow dog. Bernice ain't got to believe it. You go down there in Sunflower County and ask them white folks to <laughs> see if they believe it. <laughs> I don't care if Bernice believe it or not. I done been to where the tracks of the Southern Railroad crossed the tracks of the yellow dog and called out the names of the ghosts. And they talked back to you, too. Whoa. And you done been there for real, whining boy? In 1930. July 1930, I stood right there on that spot. Didn't seem like nothing was going right in my life. So I said, well, let me go down to the ghost of the yellow dog, call on them and see if they could help me. I went down there, stood right there on that spot and called out their names, called out the names of the ghosts. I didn't want to leave. And it seemed like the longer I stood there, the bigger I got. Seen the train coming, and it seemed like I got bigger than the train. Started not to move. Something told me to go ahead on and get out of the way. When I walked away from there, I was feeling like a king. <laughs> Had a stroke of luck to last for three years. <laughs> so, see, I don't care if Bernice believe it or not. I know, because I've been there. Well, Bernice don't believe in nothing. She just thinks she believes. Oh, now, let's not get on Bernice now. Hey, don't could tell me that you're going to buy Sutter's land. Mm-hmm. How you know Sutter's brother ain't sold that land already? Uh-uh, he say he waiting on me. Now, you know he gonna sell that land to the first one, walk up there, and hand him the money. That's just who I'm gonna be. Look, you ain't gotta know he waiting on me. I know, I know what the man told me. The man say waiting on me, waiting on me. Uh-uh, Doka, come on, give me a drink. I see Wine and Boy got his glass. <laughs> Wine and <them> Boy. <laughs> Hey, don't go tell me they had you and Lyman down in the penitentiary on Parchment Farm. <laughs> had you all down there on my old stomping ground. Yeah, they looking for Lyman <laughs> down there now. Rounded him up, put him in jail for not working. Mm -hmm. Find me a hundred dollars. Mr. Stovall come and paid my hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And the judge say I got to work for him to pay him back his hundred dollars. <laughs> I told them I'd rather take my 30 days, but they wouldn't let me do that. Uh -oh. As soon as Stovall turned his back, <laughs> Lyman was gone. <laughs> I told Boy Willie, I'm staying up here. I ain't going back with him. They treat you better up here. I ain't worried about nobody mistreating me. They treat you like you let them treat you. <laughs> they mistreat me, I mistreat them right back. Ain't no difference in me and the white man. When I tell you the difference between the colored man and the white man, the colored man can't fix nothing with the law. 
Now, that's the difference between the colored man and the white man. Oh, I don't, it don't matter to me what the law say. The law is liable to say anything. Mm -hmm. I take a look at it for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're going to end up back down there on the parchment farm. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't thinking about no parchment farm. You liable to go back to what? No, they had Lyman down there singing Bird of Bird. No, they didn't. No, they gonna yeah, tell they that lie, boy. Yeah, yeah, they did. He ain't never been in no parchment penitentiary. He said. Hold on. Bird up. Bird up. Hold on, Wait on me, oh, go ahead and marry, don't you? Wait on me, well, now, my not won't show in I go free, oh, my not won't show Otherwise, I would sell it, because you can get a nice price for that piano. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Now, Lyman don't know this, but I'm going to tell you why me and Wadden boys say Bernice ain't going to sell that piano. She ain't got to sell it. I'm going to sell it now. Bernice ain't got no more rights to that piano than I do. I'm talking to the man. Now let me talk to the man. See now, to understand why we say that, to understand about that piano, mm -hmm. well, you got to go back to slavery time. See, our family was owned by a fella named Robert Sutter. Now, that was Sutter's grandfather. All right. The piano was owned by a fella named Joel Nolander. Now, he was one of the Nolander brothers from down in Georgia. Now, Miss Ophelia, that was Sutter's wife's name. She fancied herself a player of the piano, having taken it up when she was a little girl. Now, it was coming up on their wedding anniversary, and Sutter figured he'd get her this piano for a present. The only thing with him, Sutter ain't had no money. But he had some slaves. 
told Mr. Nolander he'd give him one and a half slaves for that piano. Mr. Nolander told him, say, okay, but he wanted to have the pick of the litter. He didn't want Sutter to give him just any old body. So Sutter lined up his slaves, and after a whole bunch, Mr. Nolander picked my grandmother Bernice. Now, that's who Bernice is named after. And he picked my daddy when he wasn't nothing but a little boy, nine years old. So Sutter traded Mama Bernice and my daddy for that piano. And Mr. Nolander carried them down to his place in Georgia. Papa Willie Boy stayed on there at Sutter's. And he never did see his family again. Miss Ophelia was as happy as she could be playing on that piano. She would get up in the morning, get all dressed up, sit down and play on that piano. All right. Time go long. Time go long. Miss Ophelia got to missing my grandmother. The way she would cook and clean the house and talk with it and whatnot. And she missed having my daddy around the house to fetch things for her. So she asked to see if maybe she'd trade the piano back and get her slaves back. Well, Mr. Nolander said no. A deal was a deal. Well, him and Sutter had a big falling out about it, and Miss Ophelia took sick to the bed. That's when Sutter called my granddaddy up to the house. Now, our granddaddy's name was Boy Willie. Now, that's who Boy Willie's named after. He was a worker of wood. Ah, uh -huh. oh, he could make you anything you wanted out of wood. Yeah. <laughs> so Sutter called my grandfather up to the house and told him to carve a picture of my grandmama and my daddy's picture on the piano for Miss Ophelia. And he took and carved this. See that right there? That's my grandmother, Bernice. And here he put a picture of my daddy. Now, he made them up out of his memory. The only thing, he didn't stop there. He carved all this. He got a picture of his mama, Mama Esther, and his daddy, Boy Charles. Now, that was the first Boy Charles. Then he put here on the side all kinds of things. See that? Mm -hmm. That's when him and Mama Bernice got married. They called it jumping the broom. And here he got when my daddy was born. And he got here Mama's Esther's funeral. And here he got Mr. Nolander taking Mama Bernice and my daddy away to his place down in Georgia. Now he got all kinds of things of what happened with our family. When Sutter seen a piano with all them carvings on it, he got mad. He didn't ask for all that. When Miss Ophelia seen it, she got excited. Now she had a piano and her slaves, too. She took back to playing on it and played on it right up to the day she died. All right. Now, our brother boy Charles, that's Boy Willie and Bernice's daddy. Now, I'll tell you what kind of man he was. He was the oldest of us three boys. He's dead now, but he would have been 57 if he lived. He died in 1911 when he was 31 years old. Boy Charles used to talk about that piano all the time. He never could get it off his mind. Even years later, he was still talking about it. He'd be talking about taking it out of Sutter's house. Say it was the story of our whole family, and as long as the Sutters had it, they had us. Say we were still in slavery. Well, me and Wine and Boy would try to talk him out of it, but it wouldn't do any good. 
So on the 4th of July in 1911, when the Sutter family was at the picnic that the county give every year, we went on in there with him and took that piano out of Sutter's house. Me and whining boy carried it over into the next county to boy Willie's mama, Mama Ola, and her people. Now, I don't know what happened when Sutter came home and found the piano gone. But somebody went up to boy Charles' house and set it afire. But he wasn't in there. He must have seen it coming, because he, he went down and caught the 357 yellow dog. Now, he ain't know they was going to come down and stop the train. They stopped the train, found boy Charles in the boxcar with four of them hobos. They must have got mad when they couldn't find the piano because they set the boxcar fire. They killed everybody. Now, nobody know who done that. Some people say it was Sutter because it was his piano. Some people say it was Sheriff Carter, but don't nobody know for sure. It's about two months after that, Ed Saunders fell down as well. Just up and fell down as well for no reason. People say it was the ghost of those men who burnt up in the boxcar that pushed him in as well. They started calling him the ghost of the yellow dog. Now, that's how all that got started. And that's why we say Bernice ain't gonna sell that piano. Because her daddy died over it. Yeah, well, that's all in the past. If my daddy had seen where he could have traded that piano in for some land of his own. It wouldn't be sitting up here now. He spent his whole life farming on somebody else's land. Doka, I ain't gonna do that. And the only thing my daddy had to give me was that piano, and he died over giving me that. And I ain't gonna let it sit up there and rot without trying to do something with it. And Doka, you know I'm right. I ain't said nothing about who's right or who's wrong. I was just telling the man about the piano. I was telling him why we say Bernice ain't gonna sell it. I told you, boy, Willie, ought to stay up here with me. You stay, Lyman, all right? You stay. Stay up here and make it your own way if that's what you want to do. I'm going back and live my life the way I want to live it. Oh. Hey, let's see what we got here. You know, I ain't played this thing for a while. You was playing on it the last time you come through here. We couldn't get you off of it. Go on, play something. You all had this plan. <laughs> you and boy would have had this plan. 
Paul Verde. I didn't know he was going to be no, here. No, no. <laughs> Murray, you go upstairs and change your clothes. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh. Mighty boy, let me get ready. I'm going to fix you something to eat. All oh, right. Yeah. Hey, Lama, hmm? get up on this side of the piano and let me see something. Boy, Willie, what you doing? I'm seeing how heavy this piano is. Get up over there, Lama. Well, go on and leave that piano alone. You ain't taking that piano out here and selling it. One, two, three. You're going to play around with me one too many times, boy, Willie. And then God gonna bless you and Wes gonna dress you. Now set that piano back over there. I need this piano to get me some money to buy Sutter's land. Money can't buy what that piano cost. You can't sell your soul for money. I ain't talking about selling my soul. I'm talking about trading that piece of wood for some land. Land is the only thing God ain't making no more of. You can always get you another piano. Wine and boy, you want me to fry you some pork chops? Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you the way I see it now. The only thing make that piano worth something is them carvings Papa Willie Boy put on there. That was my great granddaddy. Now, Papa Boy Charles brought that piano into the house. I'm supposed to build on what they left me. All right. If you say to me, boy, Willie, I'm using the piano. I give out lessons on it. And that helped me make my rent or whatever. Then that'd be something else. But Doka say you ain't touched the piano the whole time it's been up here. So why you want to stand in my way? Now, I want to get Sutter's land with that piano, poor niece. Now, I'm the kind of man my daddy was, he would have understood that. Now, Bonis, I'm sorry if you can't see it that way. But that's why I'm going to take that piano out of here, and I'm going to sell it. You ain't taking that piano out of my house. Look at that piano. Look at it! Mama Ola polished this piano with her tears for 17 years. For 17 years, she rubbed on it till her hands bled. Then she rubbed the blood in, mixed it up with the rest of the blood on it. Every day that God breathed life into her body, she rubbed and cleaned and polished and prayed over it. Play something for me, Bernice. Play something for me, Bernice. Every day. I cleaned it up for you. Play something for me, Bernice. You're always talking about your daddy. But you ain't never stopped to look at what his foolishness cost your mama. 17 years worth of cold nights in an empty bed. And for what? For a piano? For a piece of wood? to get even with somebody. I look at you, and you're all the same. You, Papa Boy Charles, whining boy, Doka, Crawley, you all are like all this thieving and killing and thieving and killing. And what did it ever lead to? More killing, more thieving. I ain't never seen it come to nothing. People getting biked up. People getting shot. People falling down the wells. It'll never stop. I ain't never killed nobody. Now, I can't speak for nobody else. But I ain't never killed nobody. You kill Crawley just as sure as you pull the trigger. <sighs> hey, you see, that's ignorant. That's downright foolish for you to say something like that, Bunnies. Crawley tried to be a big man and bully them fellas, and they cut him down. That was his own fault. 
It's the smart man that lives to fight another day. Crawley ain't know you stole that wood. Oh, we ain't stole no wood, bunnies. Me and Lyman was hauling wood for Jim Miller, keeping us a little bit on the side. We dumped that little bit off down there by the creek until we had enough to make a load. Me and boy Willie told him about the wood. We told him some fellas might be trying to beat us to it. He say, let me go back and get my 38 now. That's what caused all the trouble. If Crawley ain't had that gun, he'd be alive today. He'd like to got me and Lyman killed. They shot Lyman in his stomach. We had it about halfway loaded when they come up on us. We seen the sheriff was with him, and we tried to get away. We ducked around there that bend in the creek, but they was down there too. Boy, Willie say, let's give in. But Crawley pulled out his gun and started shooting, and that's when they started shooting back. All I know is Crawley would be alive if you hadn't come up there and got him. My husband is dead and in the ground, and you still walking around here eating. That's all I know. He went off to load some wood with you, and he ain't never come back. Well, he said ain't have nothing to do with Crawley getting killed. It was his own fault. He ain't here, is he? I said he ain't here! He ain't come here, on, come on. is he? Don't do this. He ain't come here! On. I'm gonna leave Jackson, Mississippi, go to Memphis, double on back to Jackson, come on down to Hattiesburg. Change cars on the yellow dog. Oh, what land? Can a highball pass on through? Highball on through, sir. Grand Carson, 31st Street Depot, 4th Street Depot. Memphis, I'm on my way. Memphis. Are your watermelon sweet? Is they sweet, lady? Where we grow these watermelons, we put sugar in the ground. <laughs> heard of such a thing. Oh, yeah, we put it right in the ground with the seed. Taste it. Mmm. Mm. It's sweet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll take two of them. Oh, you want two? Hey, two watermelons for the lady. Two watermelons coming up. <laughs> One watermelon is awful sweet. Two watermelons can be beat. Three is better than four is best. Somebody come here and buy the rest. <laughs> All right, give this lady a watermelon here. Give this lady a watermelon here. Here you go, lady. All right, lady. How about give me that money first, ma'am? There we go, Jake. I thought you took that suit to the pawn shop. I went down there, and the man say the suit is too old. Now look at this suit. This is 100% genuine silk. Now how is a silk suit gonna get too old? Well, they got another pawn shop up on Wiley. Mm -hmm. I carried it up there. He didn't want it either. He don't take no clothes. The only thing he take is guns, radios, and maybe a guitar too. <laughs> Oh, Marita's scared to sleep up there now. Mm. Bernice figure if boy Willie leave, Sutter's ghost will follow. She don't know. I seen Sutter's ghost before boy Willie comes. Say what? Yeah, I was in my room. I heard that piano playing. I thought it was Bernice, but then she don't play that kind of music. I come out, I didn't see nobody. But them piano keys was moving a mile a minute. Well, I tell you outright, if I see Sutter's ghost, I'll be on the first thing that got wheels on it. How we do? Charge him a quarter more. Right. Watermelons! Watermelons! We got watermelons out here!
what time Bernie needs to get home. I don't see how I let her get away from me this morning. What kind of business you got with Bernice? My business. Now, I ain't asked you what kind of business you got. Well, Bernice ain't got no money if that's why you was trying to catch her. She having a hard enough time trying to get by as it is. Well, let me have $5. I'll just give you a dollar before you left out of here. You ain't gonna take my $5 out there and gamble and drink it up. Oh, let me have $5. I'll give it back to you. Make it seven. Well, you take this five dollars and you bring my money back here too. Boy, boy, they was lining up for him, boy. Yeah, boy, when he couldn't sell them fast enough. Ooh, I got something for lying. I ain't never seen nobody snatch a dollar fast, boy, with it. <laughs> they lie. Hmm? Look at this. Oh. This is one hundred percent genuine silk. Whoa. Come on, put it on. See how it fits you. Yeah, I got that in Chicago. So you can't get clothes like this nowhere but in New York or Chicago. <laughs> so you can't get clothes like that here in Pittsburgh. Well, to these folks here in Pittsburgh, they ain't never seen no clothes like that. Yeah, this is nice. This feel real nice and smooth. Yeah. <laughs> mm, that's a $55 suit. Yeah, that's the kind of suit the big shots wear. Oh, you need you a pistol and a pocket full of money to wear a suit like that. Uh -huh. No, 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 I'll let you have it for $3. All oh, the women will fall out their windows. They see you in a suit like that. Ow! <laughs> yeah, go on, give me $3, go on down the street, get dressed, and get you a woman. Oh, that looks nice, Lima. Put on the pants. Let me see it with the pants. Now go on and give me three dollars going on and take it. Look, I got a shirt to go with it. Cost you a dollar extra. Four dollars, you got the whole deal. Four dollars for everything, the suit and the shirt. Now that's cheap. All right. Now, you got some shoes? Uh-uh. What size shoes you wear? Size nine. That's what size I got, size nine. Look, I'll let you have them for three dollars. Where they at? Let me see them. Look, they nice shoes, too. Nice. They got a nice tip to them. They got a pointed toe just like you want. <laughs> Come on, boy, Willie. Let's go out tonight. <laughs> Maybe we can go to a picture show and find some women. <laughs> hey, Doka, I got the name of that man who said he want to buy the piano. The man was fixing the truck gave me his name. I got his name and number. It ain't going to do you no good. All right. Here you go. Size nine. All right, put them on. Yeah. That's the kind Stagger Lee wore. Yeah, now that'll cost you $3. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Woo. Woo. You sure this size nine? Well, now, you can look at my feet and see we were the same size. Look, go on and take them. $2. <laughs> Come on, boy, Willie. Let's go find some women. Hey, you look like you ready to railroad some, boy. Yeah, I got to make that run overnight to Philadelphia. Ah, look. Whoa! Play some cards. Oh, no, no, no. We ain't gonna play no cards with you. Lyman, don't you play no cards with wine and boy. will take all your money. Oh, you got a magic <laughs> suit there. <laughs> oh, now you'll get you a woman easy with a suit like that. But you got to know the magic words. You know the magic words to get you a woman. Uh uh. I just talk to them, see if I like them. They like me. Oh, that man don't need you to tell him nothing about no women. These women these days ain't gonna fall for that kind of stuff you talking. So you got to buy them a present. That's what they're looking for these days. Uh -huh. Come on, I'm ready. You ready, Lana? Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's go find some women. <laughs> 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 oh. 
I want to walk out with you. I want to see them women fall out their windows when they see life. <laughs> I was just getting ready to take my bag. Oh, where boy Willie? I see that truck out there almost empty. They was gone when I got home. I don't know where they went off to. Boy Willie around here about to drive me crazy. Well, they sell them watermelons. He be gone soon. Bernice, I be sitting at home and I get to thinking I'm down there and you up here. Now, you know how I feel about you, Bernice. I get to thinking how that looked to have a preacher that ain't married. Now, it'd make for a better congregation if the preacher was settled down and married. Not now, Avery. I'm fit to take my bath. I ain't got much in the way of comforts. I got a hole in my pocket near about four as money's concerned, but I ain't never found my way through life to a woman I care about like I care about you. I need that. I need somebody on my bond side. Now, I need a woman that fits in my hand. Avery, I'm not ready to get married now. You're too young a woman to close up, Bernice. I ain't said nothing about closing up. I got a lot of woman left in me. So where's it at? When the last time you looked at it? That's a nasty thing to say, and you call yourself a preacher. You trying to tell me a woman ain't nothing unless she got a man? You can just walk out of here without me, without a woman, and you still a man. That's all right for you. But everybody gonna be worried about Bernice. How Bernice gonna take care of herself? How she gonna raise that kid without a man? Everybody telling me I can't be a woman without a man. Well, you tell me, Avery, you know. How much woman am I? It wasn't me, Bernice. 
Now, you can't blame me for Crawley or nobody else. I ain't blaming nobody for nothing. Just stating facts. This is a big world. Life's got all kinds of twists and turns, but that don't mean you stop living. Now, you can't go through life carrying Crawley's ghost with you. Crawley's been dead three years. Three years, Bernice. I know how long Crawley been dead. You ain't got to tell me that. Well, I'm standing here now, Bernice. But I don't know how much longer I'm going to be standing here waiting on you. Avery, it's just that I got so many other things on my mind right now. After I come home yesterday, me and boy Willie were arguing about the piano, and Maritha saw Sutter's ghost standing at the top of the steps. She's scared to sleep up there now. Maybe if you bless the house, he'll go away. Well, I don't know, Bernice. Now, I don't know if I should fool around with something like that. I keep telling myself that when Boy Willie leaves, Sutter's ghost will leave too, but now he's talking about selling the piano. Well, maybe if Boy Willie see you was doing something with it. If you told him you was going to put it down in the church and start a choir. Well, my mama died, I closed the lid on that piano and I ain't opened it since. She used to have me playing on it. I used to think them pictures come to life at night and walk around the house. Sometimes late at night, I could hear my mama talking to them. I said, that wasn't going to happen to me. I don't play on that piano because I don't want to wake them spirits. They never be walking around this house. Now, you got to put all that behind you, Bernice. Now, everybody got stones in their pathway. You got to step over them or walk around them. Now, you picking them up and carrying them with you. You can walk over there right now and play that piano. You can walk over there right now. God will walk over there with you. Come on, Bernice. Play that old ship of Zion. You can walk over here and claim it as an instrument of the Lord. You can walk over here right now. Make this into a celebration. The Bible said, the Lord is my refuge and my strength. With the strength of God, you can put the past behind you. With the strength of God, you can do anything. Avery, just leave. Let me finish my bath. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Bernice, I'm going to go home and read up on my Bible. And tomorrow, good Lord, give me strength. I'm going to come by and bless this house and show you the power of the Lord. Now, it's going to be all right, Bernice. God said he'll soothe the troubled water. can feel me in the dark. <laughs> How's that, sugar? Go on now, wait. Oh, come on, give me a little old kid. <laughs> Boy, Willie, what you doing down here? You know I don't allow that in my house. You have to take your company somewhere else. Allow what? We just sitting here talking. I'm sorry, miss, but he know I don't allow that. Oh, you ain't got to tell me but once. I don't stay nowhere I ain't wanted. And you, you ain't got to be like that, boy. Nice embarrassing me in front of my company. Come on. Take me home. Go on, boy, Willie. Go on with your company.
you doing, Bernice? I thought you'd be asleep. Boy, will have been back here? He just left out of here just a minute ago. I was with this woman. She just wanted to drink up all my money. So I left there, come back looking for boy Willie. He just missed him. He just left out of here. They got some nice looking women in this city. I'm gonna like it up here real good. Mm -hmm. Boy Willie met a real nice one. Wish I met him before he did. He just left out of here with some woman just a little while ago. What she look like, the woman he was with? W was she a real dark skinned the woman about this high? Nice and healthy, got nice hips on her? She had on a red dress. That's her. That's Grace. She real nice. Mm hmm I seen her before Boy Willie did only. He beat me to her. Doka gone, huh? So he had to make a trip. He had to make a trip. He's still cooking for the Pennsylvania Railroad. This is usually my time I get some peace and quiet. Maretha's sleep. She looked just like you. Got them big eyes. She sure is pretty. <laughs> Well, when they say you staying, what you gonna do in the big city? You thought about that? They'll never get me back down there. <laughs> I figure I'd find me a job, try to get set up, see what the year bring. It's not a bad city once you get to know your way around. When and boy told me I wear this suit, I find me a woman. He was almost right. <clears throat> you don't need to be out there in them saloons. Ain't no telling what you live and run into out there. I don't know what the women out there be thinking about. Mostly they be lonely, looking for somebody to spend the night with them. Sometimes it matter who it is, sometimes it don't. I used to be the same way. Now it got to matter. The way I see it, we the only two people like us in the world. We got to see how we fit together. A woman who don't want to take the time to do that, I don't bother with them. How come you ain't married? I get me a job and a little place and get set up to where I can make a woman comfortable, I might get married. Avery, nice. You have to go on ahead and get married. You be a preacher's wife and not have to work. I hate living by myself. I ain't want to be no strain on my mama, so I left home. I was about 16. Everything I tried seemed like it just didn't work out. Now I'm trying this. You keep on trying. It'll work out for you. You ever go down there to the picture show? I don't go in for all that. Ain't like gambling or sinning or nothing. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I stay at home most of the time and take care of Aretha. Yeah, it's getting kind of late. Was you in bed? I ain't mean to be keeping you up. You ain't keeping me up. You got on that nightgown. I likes women wear them fancy night clothes and all. It makes their skin look pretty. I I got this at the five and ten cent store. It ain't so fancy. I don't too often get to see a woman dressed like that. When in boy <laughs> told me this was a magic suit. I'm gonna put it on again tomorrow. See if it bring me a woman like he said. I almost forgot I had this. Some man sold me this for a dollar. Said it's the same kind of perfume the Queen of France wear. Mm-hmm. I smelled it. It smelled good to me. Yeah, you smell it. See if you like it. I was gonna give it to Dolly, but I ain't like her too much. It smells nice. I won't give it to you. Make it smell nice. They tell me you're supposed to put it right here. Behind your ear. Say, if you put it there, make it smell nice all day. There. You 
You smell real good now. You smell real good for life. Leave me alone. What you want? Come on, let's go. I called a man about the piano. He said to bring it on out. Why don't you tell him to come and pick it up? I didn't want to have no problem with Bernice. This way, we can just take it on out there and it'd be out of the way. He just say, have it to him by 6 o'clock. Come on, let's go. All right, look. Come on, Lyman. Look. Look, oh, yeah, look, just move your end out. So we can work it towards the door. Now you gotta get a, a real good grip on it now. I, I got this side. You just get that side. Right, which I say ready, all right? You got it good? You got a real good grip on it? Yeah, I got it. Just push that side. All right, on three. One, two, three. Wait a minute. Something holding this. It's gonna take more than me and you to move this piano. We can do it. Come on. Hey, Doka. How did this piano get in the house? Boy, Willie, really, what you doing? I'm carrying this piano out the house. What it look like I'm doing? Come on, Lyman. Let's try the game. Go on, let the piano sit over there till Bernice come home. You ain't got nothing to do with this, Doctor. This is my business. This is my house. And I ain't gonna let you and nobody else carry nothing out of it. This is my piano. This ain't got nothing to do with you. I say leave it sit over there till Bernice come home. She got part of it, too. Leave it set there till you see what she say. I don't care what Bunny say. Come on, Lyman, I got this side. All you gotta do is move your end out. How we gonna get in the trunk? Leave that piano set over there till Bernie's come back. I don't care what you do with it then. But you gonna leave it sit over there right now. All right. I'm gonna tell you this, Stoker. I'm going out of here. I'm gonna get me some rope, find me a plank and some wheels, then I'm coming back. When I come back, I'm gonna carry that piano out of here, sell it, and give Bunnies half the money. You see, now, that's what I'm gonna do, and you or nobody else gonna stop me. Come on, Lyman. Let's go get some rope and stuff. I'll be back, Doka. After that, all them white folks down there started falling down their wells. Everybody say the ghosts of the yellow dog pushed them. Why they want to call them that? Because the Yazoo Delta Railroad got yellow boxcars. Sometimes the way the whistle blows. Sound like an old dog. 
howling. So the people call it the yellow dog. Maritha, you gonna get ready for me to do your hair. Yes, ma'am. Boy Willie, I done told you to leave my house. I ain't playing with Boy Willie. I got Crawley's gun upstairs. He don't know it, but I am through with it. Where line my girl? Boy Willie sent him for some rope just before you come in. Oh, I ain't studying, Boy Willie. Or lamb and all the rope. Maritha, you go run across the street and give me another can of hair grease, and you come straight back to them. Be playing around out there. Be careful crossing the street. Man! Run! <laughs> Boy Willie, I done told you to leave my house. All right, just a minute. Now, I'm out of your part of the house. Consider me to left your part. Soon, Lyman, come back with that rope. I'm going to take that piano out of here and sell it. You ain't touching that piano. I'm going to carry it out here just as big and bold like my daddy would have done come time to get Sutter's land. Um, why don't y'all stop that? Boy, Willie, go on, leave her alone. You know how Bernice get. I ain't thinking about Bernice. Did you say Avery going to stop by? <laughs> what Avery going to do? Avery can't do nothing with me. I wish Avery would say something to me about this piano. Now, Bernice ain't said about that. <laughs> Light that stove and set that comb over there to get hot. And get something to put around your shoulders. Maritha, if he was a boy, I wouldn't have to go through this. Oh, don't you tell that girl that. Why you want to tell her that? You ain't got nothing to do with this child. Telling her you wish she was a boy, how that's going to make her feel? If you want to tell her something, tell her about that piano. You ain't even told her about that piano. I got something to be ashamed of. You ought to mark down on the calendar the day Papa Boy Charles brought that piano into the house. And every year when it come up, throw a party, have a celebration. That way she know where she at in the world. You got her going out here thinking she all wrong in the world, like there ain't no part of it belong to her. You let me take care of my child. When you get one of your own, and you can teach it what you want to teach it. Now, what I want to bring a child into this world for now. Now, look, I ain't got no advantages to offer nobody. Many is the time I looked at my daddy and seen him staring off at his hands. I got a little older. I know just what he was thinking. He's sitting there saying, I got these big old hands. But what I'm going to do with them? I can take and build something with these hands, but where's the tools? All I got is these hands. See, now, if he had his own land, he wouldn't have felt that way. If he had something under his feet that belonged to him, he could stand up taller. That's what I'm talking about. If you got a piece of land, everything else will fall right into place. That's all you got going for you is talk. All your whole life, that's all you had going for you was talk. Straighten up your head, Marisa. Don't be bending down like that. All I'm trying to do is mark my passing on the road, just like you write it on a tree. Boy, Willie was here. That's all I'm trying to do. My heart say for me to sell that piano and get me some land to make a life for myself to live in my own way. Other than that, I ain't thinking about nothing Bonnie's got to say. Here we go. <laughs> Lyman, I've been with Well, I thought you was Lyman. Lyman? Hey, Bonice. Look who here. Come on in, Avery. Don't pay Boy Willie no mind. Don't pay neither one of them no mind. They've been arguing all day. Well, how's everybody in here? Oh, uh, Bernie say you was coming by to bless the house. Yeah, I done read up on my Bible. She asked me to come by and see if I could get rid of Sutter's ghost. There ain't no ghosts in this house that's all in Bonnie's head. Go on up there and see if you see him. I'll give you a hundred dollars if you see him. That's all in her imagination. Boy, Willie, why don't you just be quiet? This ain't got nothing to do with you. Let him go ahead and do what he gonna do. I ain't stopping him. Avery ain't got no power to do nothing. Oh, I ain't got no power. 
Well, God's got the power. Now, God's got power over everything in his creation. God can do anything. God's got a wonderful power. He's got power over life and death. Now, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. They was getting ready to buy him. And Jesus, he told him, sir, rise up and walk. And he got up and walked. And the people made great rejoicing in the power of God. Now, I ain't worried about him chasing away no little old ghost. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, where you been? I've been waiting on you and you run off somewhere. Give me that rope. I ran into Grace. I stopped and bought her a drink. She said she's gonna go to a picture show with me. Yeah. Hi, Bernice. I ain't thinking about no Grace. Nothing. Get up on this side of the piano. Boy, Willie, really don't start nothing now. Leave the piano alone. Get that board over there, Lyman. Stay out of this, Stoker. You just can't take the piano. How you gonna take the piano? Bernice ain't said nothing about selling that piano. She ain't got to say nothing. Come on, Lyman. We got to lift one end at a time up on the board. You got to watch this. The board don't slide up under there. Well, what are we going to do with the rope? Let me worry about the rope. Just get up on the side over here with me. Oh, Willie. Bernice, now why don't y'all sit down and talk this out now? Ain't nothing to talk out. I'm through talking to Bernice. Come on, Lyman. Get up on this side. Throw that rope over there and tie her onto the leg. Wait a minute. Bernice, did you tell boy Willie he can take this piano? Well, Willie ain't taking nothing out of this house but his cell. Come on, I'm gonna get up on this side over here with me. Bernice, I got to do this now. Boy, Willie said he gonna give you half the money. Go on. Just go on, Lyman. I done told Boy Willie what to do. Boy Willie, you sure you want to do this? The way I figure it, I might be wrong, but I figure she gonna shoot you first. She is just gonna have to shoot me. Please don't do that. Get out here, Marika. Get the fuck on out of here. Mommy, no, 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 no. I stopped at that Siva's place. These folks running around here talking about Patch Deck Red is coming. Why the boys sit down somewhere? Been out drinking all day. Coming to smell like an old poke. Sit down out the way. You know Bernice don't like all that drinking. I ain't disrespecting Bernice. Bernice. I'm not disrespecting you. I'm just trying to be nice. Oh, I've been out with strangers all day, and they treat me like family. I come up in here to family, and you treat me like I'm a stranger. Why don't you go somewhere and lay oh, down? Oh, I ain't thinking about no laying down. I think it's like me some pie. Come on, no, why not? Boy, me and Lyman are fixing the mood of piano. Why not? Boy, come on, boy. Come on, now, come on. Why not? Wait a minute now. I wrote this song for Cleosa. I wrote this in memory of Cleosa. Get out the way, Wanna Boy. Don't go get him. I ain't playing with him. I'll get him, Joker. Come on, Wanna Boy. Boy, we ain't taking this piano. You got to take me with it. Get that in, Lyman. Mm -hmm. Boy, where did this thing go on the move? It's Lyman here. 
Line. I thought you was coming back. I ain't gonna sit in that truck all day. I told you I'd be right back. Lyman, you gotta take your company someplace else. You told me you was gonna take me to the movie. I got to help Boy Willie move the piano. I ain't waiting on you. Told me you was coming right back. Now you got to move a piano? I knew I shouldn't have come back here. You just like all the other men. Something ain't right here. I knew I shouldn't have come back up in here. I'll be right back, boy. Where are you going? I got to take Grace home. Hey, Lava, no. Loka. Uh-huh. Do you feel that? Uh-huh. Bernie, do you feel cold? Loka, I believe that was Sutter. Avery, go and bless the house. Well, you need to bless that piano. That's what you need to bless. Joker, if you're going to bless something, let him bless everything. Bless upstairs, bless the kitchen. Go on, bless it all. He need to bless Bernice's head. That's what he need to bless. Bernice, hold this candle. And whatever you do, you make sure it don't go out. Ain't no ghost in this house. Oh, holy father. We gather here this evening in thy holy name to cast out the spirit of one James Sutter. May this vial of water be empowered with thy spirit. May each drop of it be a weapon and a shield against the presence of all evil. And may it be a cleansing and a blessing of this humble abode. Where there is good, so shall it cause evil to scatter to the full wind. Get the behind me, Satan. Oh, man. Get the behind the face of righteousness yes. as we glorify his holy name. Yeah. Get the behind the hammer of truth yes. and break it down the walls of falsehood. Father, Father, pray, pray. All this old preaching stuff, just tell him to leave. As it is written, I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness. And from all your idols will I claim you. Oh, a new heart also will I give you, and a new hey, spirit will I put It's okay, Bernie. Bo Will is okay.
right. All right, Bertie. Take care of him. Take care of this old brother. Okay, baby, that you keep playing that piano here. All right. All right, well, now, you have a safe trip, and you say hello to all the folks down there. Sooner than you think. <laughs> Come here, sugar. <laughs> okay, dope. All right, now. You take care of yourself here. Yeah? Okay. And right. Okay. Bonice, if you and Maritha don't keep playing on that piano, ain't no telling. Me and Sutter both liable to be back. <laughs> All right, love. <laughs>